the introductory lecture on usability and human factors. The first unit consists of three units. In the first unit, we characterize the cognitive consequences of health technologies in the context of healthcare. We also introduce the concept and principles of human computer interaction and human factors. In particular, we elaborate on the concept of usability and usability principles. The class subsequently focuses on issues of patient safety in the context of health technologies, a matter of growing concern. The unit also briefly addresses user-centered design and describes sound design principles. By the end of this lecture, students should be able to explain the importance of technology and health, describe the contributions of human-computer interaction to the health field, define the concept of system usability. Technology is central to the healthcare system. In fact, it is involved in every single interaction we have in the context of healthcare. Technology in healthcare can include devices or health information systems. Devices in healthcare include, for example, glucose meters used by patients with diabetes, infusion pumps, and telemedicine systems that may be used to talk to patients in their homes. Health information systems, such as electronic health record systems, are increasingly prevalent and show a remarkable diversity and level of complexity. Human Factors is a discipline devoted to the study of technology systems and how people work with them. Most of us genuinely love and value our technology, but we all experience moments of great frustration with our technology. By the way, this picture is meant to be merely illustrative. It's not recommended that you try this at home or at the office. Technologies do not just enable us to perform certain kinds of functions. They often also have a transformative nature. Technologies throughout history have had enormous social and cognitive impact, and they certainly continue to do so. They have precipitated large-scale society changes. We have some interesting cases throughout history. Technological changes invariably have both positive and negative consequences. We can find ways to promote the positive elements of technology and reduce the negative ones to improve user satisfaction with the technology and ultimately to improve usability and productivity. Usability is the study of the ease with which people can employ a tool or technology to achieve a particular goal, which we will discuss in greater depth later in this unit. Here are a few interesting examples of transformative technologies. They've had long trajectories over many decades, sometimes over a century in which they have greatly changed shape, form, and function. Telephones are an interesting case in point. The initial design for a phone was that there would be one and only one phone for a single town. Penetration of the consumer market was remarkably slow, and it wasn't until the introduction of a long cord that allowed housewives to talk on the phone while doing household chores that the phone became a common household technology. The vacuum cleaner is a technology with something of a surprisingly controversial history. Initially, it was expected to free women from tedious and labor-intensive housework, and it did that to a certain degree. On the other hand, it greatly raised the expectations of cleanliness of the house, and to some extent, this actually increased the amount of daily housework. Similarly, Electronic health records were designed with the expectation that physicians would make the practice of medicine so much easier by providing ready access to information. However, the reality is that it greatly increases the amount of time they spend documenting patient information. These are all unintended consequences of new technology. It is important to realize that all technologies have unintended consequences. These are examples of modern transformative technologies. They look rather different from the old telephones that you've seen and other technologies from the previous slide. They are slicker and in many respects easier to use, though sometimes that is somewhat deceptive. And they're so deeply ingrained and such a central part of our lives 
that we really don't question their benefits. And of course, this won't be the case for all health information technologies. Many of them are still in a transition period. One technological advancement, the electronic health record system, is in the process of transitioning to the point where it's becoming increasingly central in all facets of healthcare, but doesn't yet have the widespread acceptance of, for example, something like the cell phone or an iPod. Many of the earliest medical technologies were met with great skepticism. The stethoscope is an interesting case in point. Everybody recognizes a stethoscope as being symbolic of the practice of medicine. But there was a time when it was viewed with great skepticism, and many practitioners thought this technology had the potential to cloud their judgments about patients. It also had the potential to come between them and their patients. One could chart a dramatic cultural change over time, as the stethoscope became increasingly accepted and more widely adopted. Early technologies are often quite difficult to use, but some demonstrate instrumental value. The iron lung, which was a critical technology developed in the early 40s or 50s, it's the equivalent of today's respirator, and it kept many patients alive at perilous times. For example, during a polio epidemic. It was an incredibly difficult system to use, and it's given rise to many successive iterations in development, resulting in today's modern respirator systems and pulmonary management systems. The key point is that technologies evolve over time, as does their acceptance among practitioners. What do we mean by usability? Well, it reflects the quality of a user's experience when interacting with the product or a system. And we can enumerate several factors that affect the user's experience. Ease of learning is an important one. Some technologies are merely walk-up and learn technology, the classic case being an ATM machine. But most medical systems or medical devices or complicated software have a learning curve. Efficiency of use is another aspect of usability, as is memorability. The nature of error frequency and severity is particularly important in reference to usability of technology in medicine. Finally, aesthetics is a component of usability. Is the display aesthetically pleasing, or are there harsh colors? And does it provide subjective satisfaction to the user? Will using this technology be a pleasant or a miserable experience? The diagram illustrates a set of widely accepted usability principles for evaluating the usability of a system. These principles were proposed by Jacob Nielsen, a highly regarded authority on usability, and they are used in a particular method of usability assessment, known as the heuristic evaluation. We will be talking more about this method on the lecture on usability evaluation. I will briefly talk about a few of the principles. Visibility of system status refers to how easily one can determine what state the system is in at a given moment in time. For example, if you just clicked on a link on a web page and it's taking a long time to load, you should be able to tell whether the server is slow or overloaded or whether the page is no longer accessible. Minimizing memory load suggests that a user should not have to memorize complex command sequences to use an application. A system that provides multiple cues in text or icons to guide the user will diminish memory load. When memory load is reduced, a user can devote more of their energy to the task at hand. Errors are inevitable, but a good system should allow a user to recover from an error without the risk of disastrous consequences, such as loss of data. Consistency and standards refers to the fact that a system should adhere to widely acceptable standards and that there should be a measure of consistency across all displays. Finally, an application that is engaging and pleasurable to use will likely be more widely adopted than one that is not. Human-computer interaction and human factors are sister disciplines. Human factors have been around many more years. It dates from the turn of the 20th century. Some of the earliest work was applied to productivity of workers in factory settings. For example, they would experiment with different kinds of environmental variables, such as temperature and lighting, 
to see how it affected the productivity of workers. Human-computer interaction is a more recent discipline dating from the early 1980s. Human-computer interaction is focused on the study of people using computers in the context of work. The focus is on people, systems, and tasks. And this emphasizes a particular kind of systems approach. So problems are never purely attributed to a system. It's really an interaction between an individual's skills and the resources provided by a system. Tasks provide a convenient way to conceptualize the things that people do. So, for example, on using an electronic health record system, you could characterize any number of tasks related to retrieving particular kinds of information to make judgments about a patient or documenting certain findings. For example, if a physician recently performed a physical examination, a task would be to use the electronic health record system to document the results of the exam. Human factors involve a broader study of user performance, not only in the context of computing systems, but really with any system, be that computer, mechanical, or manual. It also has, for the present purposes, a strong focus on the workplace and the study of workflow. Both disciplines involve understanding humans in relation to the use of technologies. There have been enormous advances in health information technologies in the last 15 years. There is tremendous potential for improved health care if we are able to harness these technologies and use them productively. Increasingly, clinicians and patients will be expected to employ health information technology. In fact, clinicians are routinely required to use many of these health information technologies. Although patients are a little bit behind the curve, that's beginning to change, and there will increasingly be demands upon patients to be involved in their own health care, for example, to use personal health records and to understand their health status on the basis of information available in these health information technologies. We also know that current designs are frequently suboptimal. Some systems are more or less optimal depending on a particular population of users and depending on a particular context. If you're somebody involved in the purchase of said technologies, or if you're a stakeholder of any kind, it's important to know that increasingly there are more and more options available to you. So, why may it matter to you? Well, technology for one is a potential source of error, and we know it can compromise patient safety. Potentially, at some point, either now or at some point in your career, you'll be in a position to make a difference in product selection, and it may vary out of the kind of voice that you have. You may be in a leadership position, or you might be a user of said technology, and to the extent that you could understand and communicate and persuade people, you can potentially make a difference. It's important to know that even the best technologies have some deficiencies, and every single setting and context is somewhat different. There are always better and worse choices, whether you are purchasing a system from a vendor or whether you are developing one in-house, and usability and human factors should play an important role in that process. This introductory lecture introduces issues pertaining to the social and cognitive consequences of new technologies, especially in the context of healthcare. The lecture also introduces the disciplines of human-computer interaction and human factors. This leads us to the very important concept of usability and why it may matter in the context of health information technologies. In the next lecture, we will focus on the subject of patient safety, a matter of growing importance, and introduce the method of user-centered design.